Everything you've just witnessed can be achieved with Amazon Alexa routines and 34 doll hairs. Dollars. 34 dollars. Thanks to Lincoln Link for sponsoring today's video and for sending me their eMotion Pro Max presence sensor. Basically, this thing knows where you are in your room at any given time and can trigger individual routines based on your location. And it really is as simple as creating an Alexa routine that says, when I sit on the sofa, launch Netflix. And because this is a presence sensor using 60 gigahertz millimeter wave technology and not a motion sensor that uses infrared, if you use it for lights in routines, then it actually keeps the lights on until you leave the room, even if you're not moving. That works for Amazon Alexa, but more importantly for me, it works with Home Assistant 2. And I know I've shown you this kind of thing before using Akara, but you have never seen it like this, and you have never seen it this cheap. At half the price of the Akara FP2 presence sensor, this thing works with Amazon Alexa routines and Google Home, and as I said, works with Home Assistant via MQTT. And if you don't understand what MQTT means, it basically means it's entirely local. It doesn't require any cloud or any internet connectivity to work and it is the fastest possible integration you could use you don't have to install anything and it works instantaneously it actually won an award from the people behind home assistant i dread to think what an award ceremony looks like for home assistant don't look at me like that listen i'm one of them i i, I my virginity grew back some time ago Anyway, Paul from the past, there's, uh, there's, there's some unboxing and some setup for you to do. Um, but before you do any of that, can I just warn you that, you know you keep putting AI music into the videos, it's starting to wind a few people up in the comments section and it, the comments are really annoying. Might be worth just cutting down a little bit on the AI music. All right, Paul from the future here. Uh, people just bitch about something else because people are knobs. Before we get started unboxing this, I just have to say one thing, and this is deadly serious. A lot of people in the comments were saying how they were incredibly upset by the fact that I was using AI country music. Country fans said that they didn't like the idea that I was using AI, um, and the rest of the population said they hated country music. And I, I had no idea that there was such a large percentage of the population would be affected by this, so I apologise. I shall not use country music again. Box on the desk and I'm lifting the lid It's the kind of small thrill I loved as a kid First thing I grab is a stand kind of slick If you don't like AI music you can suck my No! Hello! Yes you too please! Yes it this week it's a hate crime! Country music! I don't appreciate jokes that I'm in! And tucked in the flap in a sleeve that elastic It is a shiny, slightly scuffed bit of plastic. <laughs> shiny, slightly scuffed old bit of plastic. Is it any good? We'll soon find out. Damn you, scuff marks. Oh, come on, that was funny. You know that was funny. Anyway, so um, I, I'm not going to put you through any more country music, I promise. The setup process was very, very straightforward. It's a simple case of giving it your Wi-Fi information and then drawing out the individual zones on the map for the individual areas that you want to be able to walk into and have a thing happen. Okay, so I've just set up the, uh, the four individual zones, my desk, my filming area, my sofa, and my wardrobe. Um, and we're going to go define those areas now simply by going into them and drawing boxes. I'm going to sit on my desk. It's my desk area there somewhere. Nailed it. All right, sofa area. So save that. Go to uh, sofa. 
Moving about and mapping the zones. That's it. How cool is that? Now I should be able to create some automations over there that make stuff happen when I enter those areas. <laughs> all of this is stored on the device itself. It is all local. So if you're a privacy nut, if you're the tinfoil hat type, you don't need to worry that this stuff is going to the cloud because it isn't. If you then add the link and link skill to Alexa, Alexa will find those zones and you can use them as triggers for routines. It really is that simple. If you're the home assistant type, oh, all you need to do is set up MQTT, which involves telling Home Assistant you want MQTT to be on, that you give it a username and password, and then put that information into the Link and Link app. As soon as you do that, the Link and Link presence sensor will appear in Home Assistant as a device, and all of its sub devices, which are basically your four zones, appear in there, and you can then use those as triggers in Home Assistant automations. So I might be trying to teach grandma to suck eggs here, which is a disgusting phrase. If you've never used ChatGPT to learn how to do really cool things, you're missing out. So particularly in Home Assistant, it isn't perfect and it does make some really stupid mistakes that makes me want to kill it. I can't kill it because it's a robot. However, a lot of the time you can just tell it what it is you're trying to achieve, tell it the names of the entities that you're trying to achieve it with, and Bob's your uncle. It just figures it all out for you. And it did. It just, it just wrote me the YAML. I can now copy that YAML to my clipboard, go to Home Assistant, go to Settings, Automations and Scenes, and create an automation from scratch, create new automation, and just hit the top three dots up here and go to edit in YAML. There, you can just overwrite all this stuff like that and then hit the three dots in the top right and go edit in visual editor. You can actually see what ChatGPT has created in a far more human way. Uh, and we're just gonna test it, see if it works. So it's actually taken a couple of polite back and forths with ChatGPT. And uh, I think we've got it solved. <laughs> gonna just go over here right this is where I film and when I sit down you should see the lights in this corner will turn to a light blue for filming yes over here the TV should switch to show yeah show some L cars that's great fun and uh, over here the IKEA lights the lanterns should turn off because I don't use them anymore you beauty they're not used for filming and uh, now I'm ready to film yeah, that's it, studio mode. And when I come back over here, I come and sit down back at my desk. Everything changes back again. The IKEA lights are back. The TV should switch back to Netflix any moment. There we go, switching back to Netflix as we speak. How cool is that? It's all just because I moved between two places. <laughs> kind of almost a tutorial there, sort of. Paul from the future, we should, uh, you listening, we should probably take that out. Just edit it out. It's pointless. No, mate. We're, uh, we're keeping no. it. It's educational. Fine. Okay, so the Link and Link thing is Wi Fi. So there's no hub required. So that is a huge boost in its favor. And it is half the price of the Akara FP2 presence sensor. It is literally 37 quid less money. It also has a brightness sensor built in, which means it can detect the ambient light in a room, and you could have automations that only turn the lights on if it was dark enough to need them. It also can detect number of people in a room. So you could say, only start the TV if one person is sat on the sofa. That way, when I have friends over and they come and sit on that sofa, it won't automatically start playing Netflix because there are two people in the room. That's really cool. Link and Link also do an even cheaper presence sensor that rather than doing zone detection in four different areas, it can just say how far away from the sensor are you. So if you put this thing at the end of a room, you could say, have the lights turn on when I am this far from the sensor in this part of the room, but if I'm even further from the sensor, have the lights turn on in this part of the room. So yeah, rather than 3D depth, it's got like a 2D depth, and that is a genius idea if you're looking to save some money. As usual, it's time for the elephant. The elephant to the room. There isn't one. Goodbye. Of course. 
Um, so, I mean, at this price tag, this is ridiculously good. And I know a lot of you probably have bought in the past the Link and Link presence sensor that was like 16 quid. Um, that was phenomenal for 16 quid. A lot of you were complaining like, sometimes it doesn't work for me. You just had to persevere with it. I, I showed you in another video, you just had to get it in the right place and do the right settings and do all. It took a little bit of time to get that working perfectly. And of course it didn't do zone detection like this thing does. This is not that. This is very similar to the Akara FP2. I plonked it in the corner. I got it in the right place first time. I, I didn't have to do anything. I just told it where the zones were and it has worked perfectly. It's the thing controlling the room right now. So if the lights go out during filming, you'll know I'm talking bollocks. <laughs> it hasn't for two full days. It's, it's kept the lights on the whole time I've been in this room wherever I've been sat. So that is, uh, I mean, I have nothing more to say on that. It's, it's perfect. It's utterly perfect. Oh my God, I hate, but he's talking rubbish again. It doesn't work on batteries. Of course it's not battery powered. What? Why do people say this? It's a 60 gigahertz presence sensor. It needs some power. If you put batteries in this thing, it'd die in a day. So no, it's not battery powered. Um, I know that's a common complaint and I understand why. You just have to put a tiny little bit of trunking into clever places and you'll find easy ways of getting power to this thing. Honestly, this, this shouldn't be a concern. You don't want to be changing batteries all over your house all of the time. Powered is better. I think the only two things worth mentioning from the point of comparison is that the Akara FP2 presence sensor has a greater advertised range by like three or four meters. It's something like seven to eight meters. Uh, and this one is only advertised at three to four meters uh, range. But I have a door that is five meters away and it, it sees me the second I walk. It actually saw me the other side of the door this morning. It had turned the lights on before I'd even opened the door. So I think that's worth mentioning. Um, also AI. So the Akara FP2 presence sensor is advertised as having AI and it's supposed to be able to go, that's a human, that's not a human, turn the lights on, don't turn the lights on. What I have noticed though, is that the Link and Link presence sensor actually has the ability to say, only measure things that are taller than this. Which means that if you've got pets, you've got Robovax, you should theoretically be able to get this thing to ignore them, which is flipping awesome. I almost, I almost swore there, I'm sorry. I, I wouldn't swear on this channel. Yeah, bollocks. <laughs> as usual, there are links in the description as to where you can pick one of these things up. And I just, this is crazy. I've had one, two, three, four, five, six new patrons in the last week. And I, I can't, I mean, <laughs> that, I'm so touched. I'm so thankful to be able to do this for a living. You guys really are the best. These are my amazing patrons uh, historically. And these are the guys I'm thanking personally this week. David Peltz, Mark Worley, John Petit, Raymond Hudson, Stephen Jones, and Graham Phelps. Guys, thank you so much. If you want to be like those guys or like those guys, you can do that at either PayPal or Patreon. And either way, uh, you, you just, I'm, <laughs> I'm losing it a bit because I, I really am just genuinely blown away. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> come and hang out with me the Facebooks, the Instagrams, the Twixters, and the Instagrams and the TikToks. See you next time. <laughs> what a mess.